I'm Jade Raymond, Managing Director of Ubisoft Toronto. With, with Black Flag now and so many studios working on it, is that ever dangerous for a franchise? Well, for example, right now on Splinter Cell Blacklist, we're collaborating with Montreal and Shanghai, and that allows us to really do things that we wouldn't be able to do as a single studio. Um, so I think in Ubisoft, we've been doing this kind of collaboration on uh, quite, you know, all of our big franchises since Assassin's Creed 2. That was the first uh, game where we really started working collaboratively across studios and we have a pretty good system for making it work and it really you know I think the way that we do it the key is really giving each studio their own um, chunk that they can autonomously work on with their own creative input you know that's how you get great things so those teams can really they're not outsourcers they're different studios that can come up with their own ideas and come up with great new things to add to your game. Everyone gets along, there's no fighting. Um, <laughs> fighting can be good. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if everyone just said, yeah, like if I had, if all my ideas people said, yeah, that's great, we're gonna do that, the game would only be this good. But you know, when, when people kind of uh, challenge each other, that's how the games get to be great. So um, starting up a new a new studio, how does that how does that work? So you just you build a team, you stick them in a box, and then you make a game, right? So what was it, how how has it been doing that with Toronto? Well, there's a lot of things that you can do right when you're starting up a new studio that you might not um, think of. But you know, everyone has everyone in the game industry has worked at different companies and has some ideas of best practices, things that worked well and things didn't work so well. And what's great about starting up this new studio with a bunch of the veterans from Ubisoft soft is uh, but also having the opportunity to recruit people from everywhere else um, we get to kind of take everyone's best practices and do it right from the beginning you know so integrating some of the Ubisoft things like open floor plan and you know really collaborative work environment and having that sort of creative atmosphere with some of you know the other things that we wanted to do better <laughs> Uh, or a little bit differently, you know, different studios, for example, having, you know, more easily movable desks so that you can collaborate with different teams or more areas where you can kind of uh, play games together and sort of do other things, uh, incorporating kind of the family feeling of Ubisoft, but with some other cultural things that we wanted to build in. I mean, that's been really cool. You, you guys have got Patriots as well, correct? You've got Rainbow Six. We collaborated on Patriots, right. but we're done with the missions that we made for them. Yeah. So what can you tell me about uh, uh, working on Blacklist? Splinter Cell is being led out of the Toronto studio, and uh, we're doing the single player campaign, but we're also doing uh, the back end support for multiplayer, co-op, and all of that stuff. Uh, we have a new economy system, full customization, um, a lot of really cool new features in Splinter Cell, and also bringing back the favorites in a new and innovative of way without getting into the details about the specific co-op modes and the specific multiplayer modes um, one thing I think is really cool is the scope and that it's seamlessly integrated so it's not like going into your menu anymore and saying okay I'm gonna play the multiplayer mode or I'm gonna play co-op um, now that Sam, Sam is on a plane and he's with his team he has you know we call it the SMI strategic mission interface and he's looking at a map of the world and you can see all these different things lit up so if your friend is on you can go and jump into a co-op mission with them if other friends are on, you can go do a multiplayer mission. You can continue, you know, one of your where you are in the single player campaign. You can jump back and see that one of your other friends has, you know, beat one of your scores in another place in single player and do that. And so it's all kind of the world is literally your oyster and it's all seamlessly integrated. And um, that's something with a single economy and a single upgrade system. So that's really something that we haven't seen in games yet, that kind of scope, like really integrated. I think we're going to see it a lot more with the next gen systems, but it's something that we're already doing on Blacklist that I'm pretty excited about. With Conviction, you know, Max and Alex came on to the Conviction uh, team and they kind of had to get it shipped. It was off in a different direction that um, was quite different than the original Splinter Cell. So they came on and they did have a vision, and but, you know, it had already been in development for a couple of years and they only had so much time to kind of wrap it up and get it on the shelves. So really with Blacklist, they're getting to kind of follow through with the whole vision, which isn't just expanding the type of gameplay options, which I think, you know, they started to do on Conviction, but really innovating from the roots of Splinter Cell, bringing back all of the stealth elements, the ghost play style, the uh, non-lethal takedowns, all of the, you know, features like the knife, the repel, all the different gadgets that people want to see, sticky shockers, all the different modes, multiplayer, expanding on co-op, and integrating that seamlessly into one experience. So this really is the game with all 
all of the options they had in mind. And I think that's really exciting for a team because you do, it's kind of like what we did with Assassin's Creed 2. You know, you have this game in mind and you don't always get to do it on the first shot. And I think we also saw it with uh, Far Cry 3. A lot of those concepts were built into Far Cry 2 and all of the systemic AI and, you know, a world that lives on its own. And then finally with Far Cry 3, you get to see it come to life. And I really feel like this is, you know, with this Splinter Cell game, you're going to get to see the full experience. Mm -hmm.